Hi there everybody, it's Mark Lawrenson here and welcome to my astrological forecast for the month of May in 2020. So when I look at the sky in May, I feel it's going to be quite an amazing time on many levels, but I just want to concentrate on uh, three of the things that really stick out to me and uh, they are Venus. She's going to be going retrograde this month, which I think is going to be super important. Um, I also want to talk about the three big guns. I want to talk about uh, Pluto and Saturn and Jupiter because they're going to be going retrograde this month as well. And I think that's going to change the dynamic a little. Um, I also want to talk about the, uh, the full moon this month. The full moon is going to be in the sign of Scorpio, uh, which has a real intensity to it. And I think that's going to be very powerful in its own right. So uh, let's get started. Let's get stuck into it. And let's start talking about Venus first. Now, Venus, as I said, is going to be going retrograde. Now, she does this once every 18 months. Now, I've got a few dates here for you. So you might want to grab a pen and write these down because she's going to be going retrograde on uh, May the 14th. And she stays retrograde until June the 25th, uh, where she starts to turn direct again. Um, and this is going to be happening from 21 degrees Gemini all the way to uh, 5 degrees of Gemini before she straightens up again. Now, as I said, she, she does this every 18 months. So the last time she was retrograde was between October 5th and November 17th of 2018. And she was doing this in Scorpio, in the sign of Scorpio. She went back to the, the tail end of Libra before she straightened up. But um, the interesting thing about uh, the Venus retrograde is that she retrogrades in the same sign every eight years. So the last time she was retrograde in Gemini was all the way back in 2012. And then before that was in 2004. Uh, and this is really interesting because what happens here is that every eight years, as I said, she's she's retrograding in the same sign. And so uh, there's five signs that she, ke she keeps repeating. And this gives her the five points of this amazing star that she creates when she comes into what's called inferior conjunction, which is a real uh, uh, incredible uh, sign of Venus's beauty creating this incredible geometric pattern out there in the uh, solar system. Another interesting thing that's going to be happening in May as well with Venus is, she, is that she's going to be out of bounds. And out of bounds means that she's, going, she's gone above uh, the ecliptic. She's gone above the path. And so when a planet goes out of bounds, it has more of a free thinking kind of radical nature about it. And that's going to be adding to her um, uh, ex extremity, if you want to call it that, during the month of May as well. So um, just looking to see if there's any other astrological points I need to bring up as far as what she's doing in that area is concerned before I start talking about her on the level of interpretation. I think I've covered just about everything that's going on there. But uh, when Venus is retrograding, she is uh, she's backtracking over a particular area of the sky that she's already been. And so you get a feeling of something having to uh, review or revise. Uh, she's going back to have another go, have another look, check something out that she may have missed the first time around. Now, I want to get a little bit deeper with this because I feel we really need to go here with this one. Because Venus is the goddess of love, as we know. She's the goddess of love. She's the goddess of relationship. She's the goddess of connection. She's the goddess of peace. She's the goddess of harmony. She's also the goddess of security and value and comfort and a feeling of safety. So she's going back in our lives to review or to check out or to do again something in these areas. Now, 
I don't want to get too superficial or mundane about this because I want to go right down there where we, where, where we really live because what's happening to us at the moment, um, where we are oh, with, uh, with this particular outbreak and what we're, what's happening to us as far as having to uh, socially isolate and pull ourselves in. Um, there is something going around our connection to each other um, that we feel on a certain level that we're missing. Now, this is really interesting because she is in Gemini and Gemini is the most communicative of all the signs. Gemini is about relating. Gemini is about relating to life in general and being able to talk and being able to get our message out there and being able to understand and being able to connect with somebody on that level of being able to say, I get you, I understand you, that kind of thing. And so when, we, when Venus is going back, we are really going to have to take a good look and a deep look at how we love. Now, this is super important because I feel that what's happening to us now and how we're being pulled away from each other and pulled away from life is, I hope, making us all think about how important love and connection and relationship is in our life. And so during this time, we are being pulled into a, into a place within ourselves where we really have to understand this, uh, this feeling of this need, this basic need to be able to, uh, to be with somebody or to, be, to, to love somebody or to connect with somebody. Now, we may take this for granted. Most of us take this for granted. Most of us go through life on that level of just treating each other. I don't want to say treating each other superficially, but you know what I mean. There's, there's a feeling of just jumping from thing to thing, from person to person, uh, especially now, you know, in, the day, in these days of social media, where everything's very slapdash and everything's very disconnected, but connected at the same time. There's no real heart in anything. There's no real... Um, love, there's no uh, sense of, of bonding, there's no sense of harmony, there's no sense of, of that, that joy that comes with being in, in another person's presence. And so I think it's super important as Venus is retrograding in our lives to be able to go back on what is important about about love and relationships on that level, to be able to appreciate them, to be able to celebrate them. Now, the last time that Venus was retrograding, as I said, was back towards the end of 2018. And I actually spent some time with an ex of mine. Way back then, uh, I had an ex, you know, I had an ex back in the day uh, that I don't really see all that often. And um, when we got together, we got together, we went back to his place, his ranch uh, kind of thing and in Australia. And um, we had a lovely time together. He was with his current partner, of course. And it was really beautiful. It was a really beautiful time, a really lovely time of connection. Uh, no hard feelings, that kind of thing. Uh, and it was, it really, it really dawned on me on a certain level how, how love uh, is, is, is more important than any of the, the superficial or any of the, uh, the cheap drama that you might want to hold on to. That really taught me something when Venus was retrograding, uh, the last time around. And so I can't help but go there. I can't help but think that every single one of us, especially as it's retrograding in uh, Gemini, every single one of us needs to be able to uh, to say, because Gemini is about relating, as I said, talking, getting the message across, to tell people how much you love them, to tell people how much you care about them. Now, Venus is also about value, as I said. Now, this is even more important on so many levels because value what do we value in life we have to value love that's of course is a big thing 
But where are our values placed? This is another thing that's going to be happening in May because we put our values on things that really don't matter. We put our value values on things that aren't uh, significant or that don't have any purpose or don't have any meaning. Now, as it's going back, there's that need for us to actually start to understand on a certain level, what do we value in life? Where are our values? Uh, what is valuable about us is a big thing. What is what makes me valuable? I'm worthwhile because, you know, that kind of thing. You've got to understand that last word in that sentence. I am valuable because now something could have happened. Some things could have happened over the last handful of weeks that may have played around with your value system in some kind of way. Now, it's time to actually go back over backtrack over that particular area and have another look at it, maybe correct it, maybe change it, maybe do something about um, looking at it in a very, very different way or being able to connect with it in a different way. It's always going to be around our safety and security is going to come into this. So money might be a part of it. Uh, that feeling of now, you know, a lot of people aren't in work and, and money is hard to come by, all that kind of stuff. We've got to start to understand on a certain level about uh, our, our relationship with money and uh, what does money mean to us more than just buying stuff that we don't need. Where are we putting our money? Are we putting our money in things that we feel on a certain level is going to go somewhere that feels like it's going to have some purpose behind it? Or are we just, just the, the people who just treat money in a frivolous, um, superficial, non-caring way. Now, this is another thing that comes in with, with Venus retrograde. So all the things that I've talked about, Venus is going to go back and you need to be able to relook, reshape, revise, revision, all the stuff around what you, how you feel, how you live and what you believe about your Venus. This is going to be super, super, super important for you, especially in these days, as I said, where we're pulled away from life, where we're all told pretty much to disconnect, socially isolate. And it's so interesting how Venus is being pulling us back, socially isolating us to get us to become closer, to get us to understand true love and true connection. Now let's talk about the three big guns that are uh, starting to retrograde. Now, uh, Pluto does it first. Pluto starts to retrograde actually on April the 25th. Um, and then um, Saturn starts to retrograde on, retrograde on May 10. And Jupiter starts to retrograde on May the 14th. Now they retrograde for quite a few months. Uh, they don't actually start to turn direct until uh, the middle of September and Pluto until it uh, starts to turn direct uh, in very early October. And so here, these three planets, these three big planets that have been uh, huge, huge transformers, uh, huge uh, catalysts in uh, the change that's happening in the world at the moment. Uh, Pluto about power, Saturn about responsibility and authority, and Jupiter about that sense of expansion. But I want to I want to uh, go down the road of Jupiter a little bit further because we we kind of understand Jupiter on a very um, on a very ordinary level. Jupiter is just about luck and expansion and being able and abundance, but We've got to understand Jupiter. Jupiter is a teacher and Jupiter is basically about our principles. Jupiter is about the way the, 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 the beliefs that we have. And Jupiter is about the, the what we stand for in life, our principles in life. Now, this is so important because our principles are up for grabs at the moment. People don't know what to believe in anymore. And Saturn is actually getting us to become responsible 
for our lives and become responsible for who we are on the planet and take ownership and take accountability. And of course, Pluto is our personal power and how much we give away is number one, how much we give away to, to uh, outside forces, uh, to money, uh, to the government, all that kind of stuff. So we've got our principles and our ethics. We've got our, our need to become responsible and take ownership. And then we have our own personal power that's come into play over this particular period of time. Now, this time, all these things are what is what we need to do our deep changes on um, collectively and globally, of course. But I want to talk about it more personally. I want to talk it about talk about it in your life. Now, as it's go, as they're going backwards, this may I'm not saying it will, but this may actually uh, start to pull back on what we're experiencing at the moment. Things may start to subside just slightly as they start to pull back. But I want you to, rather than actually going, oh, oh, that's good, it's starting to feel a little bit like things are starting to get back to normal or taking shape, I want everybody to really revise and, and, and go back over again, um, what, what do I stand for? What do I believe in? What are my principles? I need something in my life to have faith in. And it's got to be something that feels right and meaningful for me. And I want to be accountable. I want to be responsible for my life. I want to be responsible for the steps I'm taking in the world. I don't want to point fingers. I don't want to blame anymore. And Pluto is about, I want to take my power back. I want to take my power back from outside forces that I feel have power over me, that I give power to. And so this is big stuff. This is really, really big stuff. But as it's going, as these three planets are going backwards in the sky, I think it's very, very important for us to actually start to pull this into ourselves. You know what I mean? To be able to, to own it, to be able to internalize it, to be able to integrate it, and to be able to become it during that period of time. Now, it may sound very dramatic, and it is, but it's, it, it's important. You know what I mean? It's important stuff that we, uh, we globally, we're all in the same boat together. Every single country in the world is going through what we're going through at the moment. And we need singly, every single one of us needs to be able to, in our own level, step up to the plate and be our own representatives of change. We really do. So as, as these planets are starting to retrograde, this is a great time for us to start to, as I said, to internalize this energy and start to to work it into us, start to become it. So when all this is over, we can actually step out into the world in this brand new, strong, powerful way with this new belief in life in a, in that, in that is purposeful and meaningful. Now, I want to talk about, uh, I want to talk about the full moon in Scorpio. So uh, the full moon in Scorpio uh, is happening. Here we go. The full moon in Scorpio is happening on the 6th of May, 6th or the 7th, depending on where you are in the world. Now, this is going to be interesting because I always think that the uh, uh, full moons uh, are kind of the, the fruition point of what started with the new moon. Now, the new moon started in Taurus, of course, started in Taurus on the 22nd, 23rd of April. Uh, and of course, it takes two, roughly two weeks for the moon to go from new uh, to full. And so Taurus always starts something on the level of security, something on the level of safety. And so there would have been stuff around the, the beginning of the lunar month where you may have consolidated something or you, you may have uh, uh, 
uh, earth something or grounded something in some kind of way. Now, two weeks later, it becomes full. This is the fruition point, and the fruition point's in the opposite sign. The fruition point is going to be in Scorpio. And so this is a real interesting one because we're just talking about a monthly, uh, a monthly energetic pattern. It's not necessarily going to last for a long, long period of time, but it will be a test, so to speak, on your level of power again, because Scorpio is often about power, uh, power and security again. So here, what happens is there's something happening this month about you feeling safe within yourself, you feeling secure within yourself. It could be external. It could have something to do with money. It could have something to do with your work. It could have something to do with the concrete world. But often Taurus can be be more than that. Often Taurus can be uh, a sense of personal value, a sense of personal worth, feeling good within yourself, feeling good within your skin, that kind of thing. Now, when it becomes full, which will be around the 6th and the 7th of May, there's going to be a, there's going to be an energy pattern that takes you into an area that uh, tests you on the level of your security, so to speak. Now, this could actually feel um, quite intense for some people. It might put you in a situation where you may have to uh, uh, be brave, be emotionally courageous, be able to feel that you're taken outside your comfort zone. It might feel a little confronting. It may feel like something's in your face. It may feel like you're faced with the truth in some kind of way. And you may be seeing things in a totally different way. Uh, different light. Something may just come up from the underworld, so to speak, uh, and hit you straight between the eyes. Now, I don't, I don't think it's going to be scary because it's not about that. But it is about, it is about stuff on that level of you needing to, as I said, batten down the hatches and white knuckle and keep everything safe and secure where you're going to be tested on the level of your personal power when that gets rocked. Now, this is going to be a good time. I'm not looking at this as anything but transformative and anything but uh, exciting uh, and, uh, and cathartic because it feels like this month for people, and it's going to depend, of course, where Scorpio is in your chart. Uh, it's also going to be depending on uh, uh, any aspects that it's making in your chart as well to be more specific about what this energy means. But it feels like this is your time to come into your own power and you may actually break something open. You may actually, there might be a, 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 a mini uh, kind of uh, a feeling of being able to come out of the crystals, so to speak, and to be able to become a uh, 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 new, renewed in some kind of way. Now, as I said, this is a monthly thing, so it may not really change your life uh, to that grand extent, but it's still, but still at the same time, um, there is something about this energy that I feel is actually going to, um, is actually going to open, probably break something open for you. So it'll be really interesting, uh, especially for people who've got planets in fixed signs, meaning uh, Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, or Leo, because I think they will feel it the most. Uh, and I think this will be an interesting month for those people. And there will be probably a change of sorts along the way. Something I forgot to mention that I'm going to bring in now um, with Venus uh, retrograding is uh, that she's also going to be coming into square uh, with Neptune for short periods of time. Now, I'll give you the dates for that. She comes into uh, square with Neptune um, on May, between May the 4th and 7th, uh, and then again between May the 20th and the 23rd, and then she comes into square with Neptune further down the track on July the 27th. So this adds a little bit more to what I said. Uh, particularly around love and particularly around soul and particularly around a need to get into a, a higher 
or, or deeper or more spiritual understanding of what love truly is, not about the, the small, uh, cheaper, uh, insignificant version of love. And I always feel that, that Venus Neptune, you know, Venus Neptune transits in astrology, um, will often get a wrap around um, disillusionment, you know, the rose colored glasses things, not seeing things clearly in love. But I often think that Venus Neptune can actually do the opposite when you're tuned in. It can be an awakening of sorts. It can be all of a sudden I didn't realize that this could feel like this, that love could feel like this. It feels like you've, you've, you've come out of an old version of love. You've come out of a, of a more security based, more stuck, more egocentric version of love. And you're coming into a higher understanding of what love truly is. And because we're all in the same boat, everybody, every single person on this planet is going through what we're going through together now. And so we really, we really do, we really do have to look at each other as brothers and sisters. Because as I said, there's not one of us that's really uh, not included in what's going on. And so this is the, this is the Venus Neptune. We're all joined. We're all one. We come from the same source in the end. And so here is a huge reminder of that, especially as Venus is going retrograde, a huge reminder that we are, we are all heavenly little, little sprinkles, you know, of, 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 of God, little sprinkles of the universe, all here together. And what's going on for us now, especially as Venus is retrograding and coming into square with Neptune, this is about us coming into a, a much deeper, much more sensitive, much more compassionate version of ourselves. So we can actually get back out into the world again when all this is over. And hopefully we can actually start to look at things and feel things and be more sensitized to things in a completely new and different way. So that's what's happening in the sky in May. Now, before I say goodbye, I just want to uh, I just want to talk about a mini course that I'm doing. Uh, Sydney Astrology School is my school. Uh, I take people uh, from beginners right through to advanced in that one year in a one year course. But I do do mini courses and webinars along the way. And I do have a mini course coming up. It does start on the 2nd of May. Uh, It'll be the 3rd of May here in Australia. And it's a five week mini course on the nodal aspects. And as I call it uh, uh, the past life, uh, bringing the past life story together with the South Node and all planets in aspect to the South Node. It's a very, very, very important part of uh, learning astrology, especially doing readings. And so I'm going to be doing a mini course on that. It's going to be five weeks. We're going to do a webinar every week for five weeks, starting May the, the 2nd. And uh, you'll be getting notes and you'll be getting diagrams and you'll be getting little tiny bits of homework. Um, but you can go to Sydney Astrology School, www.sydneyastrologyschool.com. And you can sign up for the mini course. It's uh, very affordable, especially if you're coming from other parts of the world, because you'll be paying in Australian dollars. So it's going to be very affordable. And um, I think it's going to be a really important course for people to really open up a new area of chart work that they probably haven't really uh, looked at before or done a lot of work on before. So everybody, let's get ready for May. It sounds like it's going to be super exciting. <laughs>